Everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we have another video from another channel. These are the legends of Nirvana. Three people who are working their way through a 3,000 game collection. And then, if I know gamers, adding more to that collection before they finish working their way through it. So we're going to bring you a video from them. We've got several videos from them coming up in the future. Hope you enjoy them. Click on the link in the description below to go check out their YouTube channel. got to play Geekopolis. This is a oh. yeah, tile. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've been practicing. All right, it is a tile placement card drafting area control, control built. Yeah, area control kind of important. Oh, I always forget that. At several the end. different mechanics. Yeah. yeah, so there's a couple of things going on with this game. Uh, overall, you're building um, a city, and on that city, you can actually overbuild some of the smaller buildings. So, um, so that's kind of a very loose theme, I would say. So going into quality of pieces, you have your standard um, wooden chits. Um, you've got these wooden cubes to be essentially, I think, your workers or your employees. They call them resources, but they're generic resources. Yeah. Yeah. It's very generic. Um, you also have uh, victory cardboard tokens. You have wooden um, cranes, cranes. Um, and and cards. The cards are actually really nice stock. They got good texture to yeah, them. Yeah, there's a good one to finish them. Uh, mm -hmm. But you're shuffling them many times during the game, so you're going to want to sleeve them if you're going to play this regularly. Uh, yeah. And I believe these are standard Euro size. Okay, so that you got your little not great quality cards. Yeah, there's, it's a five player game, so they have five different color boards that the, the only designation difference on the color is the actual logo of the name. Yeah, I will say they've got purple. Yes. So. Well, the character is actually pink, but it looks no, there's a the pink resource, but they match to the color of the player. I can paint them purple. You can pretend they're purple. <laughs> um, so what do you guys give it a score wise? Um, I'd give it a six. I mean, it's a little, comfortable with a little bit better in Katana. Yeah. yeah, I think six is appropriate for this game. So moving on to theme, we've already kind of touched base on the theme is that you're building a city um, and you're trying to, you know, build it bigger and better. Um, well, the, the it's very the actual nice. book says 2212, so apparently this is in the future. This is in the future. Ginkgo bil biloba, biloba, the oldest and strongest tree in the world, which that's what like they, they use for, like, I think a while back about this magic, you know, rub. I like, I kind of like aloe, but that was like the... Well, it, it's supposed to help your memory, too. Well, apparently it didn't help mine. <laughs> Uh, the oldest and strongest tree in the world has become the symbol of a new method of building cities in symbiosis with nature. So this is kind of like a hippie city type yeah. thing. But uh, 2012. <coughs> 22, 22. 22. Oh, okay. 200 years from now. Got and it. 2012 okay. would actually be in the past because we're in 2021. We're going <laughs> <out>. <laughs> uh, it's been yeah. a couple of years, okay? <laughs> yeah, but humans have exhausted the resources that the Earth has offered them, and humanity must now develop cities that maintain a delicate balance between resource production and consumption. However, habitable space is scarce, and mankind must now face the challenge of building ever upwards. <laughs> to develop this new type of city, you will gather a team of experts around you, or us, you know. Um, <laughs> And to try to become the best urban planner for Ginkopolis. That's more than what I got out of playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story. <laughs> well, I mean, it is. I think it's very loose. Um, I don't. I didn't realize they were futuristic, balancing, acting, whatever. Um, in part of the game, you, I just you didn't like look it, at the cards. They're they're, they're those just, definitely don't look like buildings from the past. Well, no. That's but... 2012 era. Uh, all right, I could go 2012. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, long story short, I think the the theme is pretty loose on this. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just another another civilization building game, which I'm completely okay with. Don't don't discourage me there because I love um, civilization or city building. So, um, overarching score. What do you guys think? I mean, the artwork, there's nothing, I mean, it's okay. It's I, nothing fantastic. It's I think it's a little bit better than that because I think the buildings look nice, but the characters on uh, 
the resource cards uh, that you get initially is, is pretty nice to do. So well, also, I, 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 and, the, and these look really also nice. Also, as you scale up, this is kind of like the one we saw with Claim. Where right. The, like the, the lower better. the number city, the more underdeveloped it is. And as you move up to the 20, it becomes more, more progressively, yeah, more progressively developed. So they did take some time and care in that. Yeah, I, I think I would give this at least a seven. I, I, I like it. Yeah, I think so. yeah, yeah. I, I think seven's fair for this because um, because of the time they did yeah. put into the development of the cities. I mean, yes, it it doesn't it isn't important to the game at all. The game is really a quick and easy learn game of you know trying to do city development. And but, the artwork is not nice but the art cards. is it's very nice drawing. Who did the artwork, stories. by the way? Um, the uh, artist was forgive me if I I'm sure I'm mispronouncing this Gail Lornarian. Or Lenorian, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> designed by Xavier George is is. Uh, yes. uh, but this was a I think oh, so. That was Xavier Roberts. Well, oh, close. Yeah. Uh, originally released in 2012, this is a reprint that just came out this yeah. year. But it is not a second edition like some people thought it was going to be. So nothing new. It's a strict reprint. Um, what was the price point on it? It is 59.99. A little that's pricey. That's now pricey that, that that's straight MSRP, you know, there are some websites uh, that I can buy it a little bit cheaper <laughs> than the MSRP. That that's the MSRP that, price. That seems a little pricey for this. Yeah, I mean for I mean, what for, the for cardboard. Wise, yeah, it's definitely not a fifty nine ninety nine dollar yeah. value as far as components, but the gameplay we haven't you know, got to yet. All right, so you guys rated a seven for theme. I guess if you. Insist. Do I have to twist your It's your vote. You can say whatever you want. Yeah, you're Merkin. You can do you want. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, you know, it's a very loose game. I didn't, I, I don't, I can't see this as any better than Canton, really, because it's just okay. an overlay of theme. So, I mean, the artwork, the artwork's a little bit better, so I'll give it a six, and that's pretty much where I'm at. So, okay. Um, all and right. That's okay. And that's yeah. okay. Um, so moving on to rules. All right, so the rule book, uh, it's a very easy game to pick up. There's not a lot to the game. Right. It's only a few actions you can take. Um, it's laid out very weird. Um, so, I mean, I guess not horribly weird in the sense that you've got set up and you got how to play and then you got in game. But, but there, first of all, there's no cheat sheet for this and there's a lot of iconography, which is already a problem. Secondly, they have a summary on the back, which is helpful, but this should have been a cheat sheet too. Uh, but if you use this as a cheat sheet, then you have to sift through and to find the iconography. Is it that's your cheat sheet? But here's the thing. That, well, that's, there's that no helps explanation. With some of this. Yeah, I mean, this, there's, there's no words. It's just this pictures. has the summary text that goes along with the pictures, which are on your sheet. So if you don't understand this iconography, you're going to reference this. But then if you want to know what the cards mean, you have to start going into the game and actually or the book and finding them. Um, and then that's after the solitaire version. And you know, it, it, so the end of games here, it's just, you have to go sifting right. through the book when you need it. And it, you know, this is something you're going to reference a lot, especially with new players, to know, okay, what is that, that bonus game, in bonus kind of thing? Uh, what are the ongoing effects? Do? The ongoing effects are a little easier. Once you pick it up, you're going right. to need it. But the in-game bonuses, you're going to need a lot. And it, it's inside the book. I mean, it'd be nice if that were on a cheat sheet. They really should have. Well, no, I mean, I think they just had an opportunity here yeah. with yeah. the player boards. And honestly, when when we first bought this out and I didn't know the rules, I looked at it and This would like, make no sense to you. It doesn't make any sense. And how is that helpful? Right. So, um, you know, for me, I always love rules or something, that, that cheat sheet that I don't need mm -hmm. to read the rules to. Yeah. Get by because you know I don't listen to the rules when y'all talk about them. It's true. So. Or ever. <laughs> um, That's true. I'm going to give true. this one probably a seven just because, I mean, it isn't that complex of a game. And it's functional. It's functional, but it's, it's not, not badly worded. It's not uh, mistranslations or anything like that. It's just laid out in a way that's going to cause you to have to sift through the book several times when you're playing to try to find what those in game bonus cards mean. Right. Yeah. Okay, um, so moving on to gameplay, I think this is where really where this game shines, um, or at least it did for me. Um, Which I'm really surprised by. But go ahead. I'll explain why I was surprised. Area control? 
Yes. Okay. That's because if you notice, I didn't play with any of the area control pits. <laughs> which is and good. that's why we didn't win. <laughs> I did. But barely. I mean, you weren't that far above me. So yeah. the fact that you ended the game and I didn't realize it was the end of the game really I think, me up. Now, I, I've thought about it for a few minutes. I think this game could be really brutal. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to play that way, are we? <laughs> um, I, 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 so, think, I think people's feelings can get hurt. As far as the gameplay, how it plays out, you have a starting set of city tiles that range from one to three, from three different colors, blue, yellow, and red. Blue tiles generate future tiles, so you can up, get additional city tiles. Yellow generate victory points. Red generate resources. Generic that resources. That was not what Randy called them. Called them cylinders. Well, yeah, because they're they're generic right. resources. Uh, I thought they were workers, to be quite they're honest. They're called like resources you. in the book. They we, feel we, like workers. We call them cylinders. They don't look like the meeples, so like, I don't call them workers. Um, yeah, but you're like putting them places to work the, the area. To, 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 to mark that you're occupying that area, yes, the, the but not that you're working it. So there's letters representing A through L around the board that are to mark where you could do a future build. Or you have the action of playing a card to go upward and build on top of a tile that's already there. Or you can play the card just to gain additional stuff, whether it's resources or additional tiles, tiles or, or victory points. points. Uh, so you have those three abilities. You also have some starting cards that give you basic bonuses when you take one of those three actions uh, and you can accumulate them so they stack. Uh, each time you build an upgrade over a tile, you get the card for the tile you overbuilt so it adds to your pool of stacking so you can get more bonuses when you get your take those them. actions. So you have kind of an engine building system in this game. But it's a very basic one. There's nothing you know real complex about it. The, the higher tiles, when you overbuild those, you can get in-game bonus scores, points for it. Uh, that's really all there is to it. Each turn, you're going to get four cards. You're going to pick one. You're going to pass the other three to the next player for the next round. You play your tile or card in one of those three fashions to build on top of a tile, to build adjacent to a tile using the letters, or to gain resources or but where the game can become brutal is when you overbuild, you can overbuild any tile. So yep. I can overbuild Randy's tile. And what happens is he gets, you have to mark the tile that you build with one of your cylinders, resources, call it whatever you For each floor. For, for each floor that's up. So your first one's just one. So if I build on top of that, he gets his back and I put two on top of it. Now, Miranda could overbuild mine by doing a level three, so I get my few back and she puts three on it. But you get victory points for being overbuilt. Yes. So you get a, you get a return, plus you get those, those but, resources But then at back. the end of the game is where the area control part comes yes. into play for sections. And that's where most of the points are going to occur in the game. And that's where it becomes uh, brutal. I beg to differ because I got most of my points not in that. I mean, and I was. You got most of the second. points from us building over your stuff. Well, no. No, she had an engine going where she was generating a right. bunch of victory point tokens. And that's the thing. There's a lot of ways you can win this game. I don't think there's one. I don't think the area control is going to be that dominant always, but it is important. And I think, yeah, you do have to keep that in consideration. I, I yeah, and I think that's that where you probably suffered this game because I don't think you really focused on that aspect. Well, no, I focused a little bit on it, but the thing is, at the very end, you guys bought, you built over my key, mm -hmm. the few key places that I did have, which yeah. then totally screwed me over. I will say the thing about this is not all cards are equal. So last game, I played using a strategy of the placing on the outer rim. But this time, all the cards I ended up getting were the spend a card yeah. to get those, re you know, spending a card without overlaying or whatever. Mm -hmm. I thought, I didn't think that that was nearly as powerful versus the other because I couldn't get my tokens on the board and I essentially wasted a turn see, getting resources to be able to play it the I, next round. I thought yours. Versus before, I was able to just keep laying tiles out. I thought yours so I was way it. more powerful because I got a wide mix of a little bit of everything. And I didn't, I wasn't able to get a really good engine going. I was able to do a couple things for each of the actions, but I wasn't getting a lot for any one. And you got a lot 
when you play the card for resources. Right, but then, but that wasn't one of my points. pieces. I know, but you got a lot of points. You got a lot of uh, your cylinders in play. I mean, you could, or back in the, to be able to be played. I didn't get all that. I had to waste turns just to try and get two or three uh, cylinders back so that I can play tiles. No, no, I did the same thing as well because I was only getting you, one cylinder. But you got so I, much more stuff than I did. And well, that, I mean, that, it's that, that, that's where it hurt. Yeah. Me. Well, I, I do think I agree with you as far as the card playing for just resource or for stuff, I will call it, because again, resources yeah. is the name stuff. of the cylinders. Uh, but to gain your tiles, resources, etc., I don't think it's as powerful as getting tiles playing on the board and building your engine around getting mm -hmm. tiles because that's what I had was I never I don't think I've played a card for card but maybe one time during the course of the game and I only did that because I've got so much stuff right, you got so much stuff whereas I got stuff for playing tiles either upwards or adjacent yeah. and yeah. last it wasn't last as year. many things as you got because my you had everything stacked on one whereas I had two kind of an even split between the two but I still got enough to keep my engine rolling where I didn't have to keep drafting playing actions to get tiles because I would get a tile and a, and a uh, cylinder or resource or whatever back each time. Uh, so I kept kind of funneling my own engine. I, don't, I only had like one tile or two tiles to choose from each time, but you know, at least I had something to play. Yeah. So no, no, I, I, I do think that there are certain strategies that are more powerful than others. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just something to keep in mind when you go when you go to collect obviously now for me though i ended up with like three or four cards straight away that had just the card playing and so i was like well i'm yeah. gonna run with it because it'd be stupid for me not to yeah. it's like the game is telling me which way to go um but it's it that was really rough playing yeah. now it one, one thing i do like about the way they they design this is they have six sets of starter cards of three design where you can they have all the same letter or number to tell you these go together and you can put them out for new players play that way where they select them but once you have players know how to play and know what those cards are for the the real way you're supposed to play is get four of those cards four cards at random from the set from the starters and pass them out and draft them so you end up with three that you've chosen and I think that's going to play a lot better. Yeah, a lot yes. of hours. from the reviews when I was looking up the stats for the game, a lot of people really like the drafting mechanic of it. Yeah, I, yeah. I think, I mean, it's it's not a real heavy game where drafting no, doesn't make a major difference. But, but, on but, but I think they made, it, they made it sound like, from what I've read on people's individual reviews, that it really added, it was more fun for them. Yeah, I, and I think it will be. We haven't played it that way yet right. because we've had two rounds of playing it where we've had new people involved. Yeah. So, all right, give it a score, guys. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I think, I, I didn't love it. I certainly played it again. I think I would give it a seven. I, I liked it. Yeah, I'm with you. It's a cute, I mean, it's a good game when you get some of the newer players into yeah. it. It's not too complex. So I think it hits a special niche and it's still entertaining for those that have played a while. So I, I agree with you, seven. It's not my favorite, but it's, it's all right. Yeah, I'm going to go a little higher. I'm going to go 7.5. I think it's got enough in it to me as a starter game that you can still teach people, but it's still interesting. It's not something that I think is going to be feel old quickly. Like, right. You know, a lot of the entry-level games can. The, re the, the replayability is definitely high you know, for a, a fairly beginner-level game. Yeah. I, I, I think yeah. this is a little heavier. This isn't an, an entry-level game, I wouldn't call it. It's probably a light to medium is what I would label this game as. It's It's got a very, very few basic actions you take, but there's a little more strategy than what you would get in a starter game. But if you got someone who's fairly advanced as far as a starter, somebody who's pretty logical or plays a lot, you know, I don't know, maybe does puzzles or that kind of thing, and it's a, this is a starter game, you could probably pass it off. Well, I mean, it's definitely more tactical than strategic. Yeah. So in, in, in many different ways, because you are, you don't know what cards are coming, so you have to be able to react to what you get each round versus being able to plan out in the future. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's why I think it's a little bit more lighter than some of the other games we reviewed. Yeah. Because it's definitely more tactical. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us, and we hope to see you guys again. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you'd like to see more uh, some of the games that we play at our table. Um, thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.